The fear that humans will be replaced by machines is not new, we have a lot of movies on this subject also. There is a huge debate either AI generated images can be called art or that those tools are violating copyright laws because the AI was trained on other artists work without their approval. Either way AI is here to stay and I'm really curious how things will be in a few years if AI will really take artists jobs or if we will have some laws that will clarify the AI generated image copyrights. With or without AI I will continue to create my art because it's my passion and I love spending time doing it. Talking about my art I will show you in today's video how I created this AI vs artist artwork. Let's go! I found a really cool abandoned uh, building and then using the clone stamp tool I try to hide some parts that uh, I didn't want to keep and then I dragged it and make it bigger and place it where I wanted it. Then I added a levels adjustment layer and I dragged the white uh, slider to the left because I want to have the lights coming from the right side I added an exposure adjustment layer, dragged the exposure and uh, added a lot of lights and then on the mask I inverted the mask and then with the brush tool and the white color I added some lights on the right side. Then I repeated the process by adding a solid color adjustment layer with gray yellowish uh, color. I set the blending mode of this color to overlay and the same thing I inverted the mask and I painted on the same areas to add some colors on that light that I just added. Here on this wall I added uh, this wall sign and then I created uh, a logo to use it on the store. So I added a bevel and emboss, or uh, inner glow, color overlay and to create a glow around the logo I added a few shadows that I set to linear light and I uh, duplicated them uh, a few times and I ended up with this result. Then I decided to change the color and I have used a hue and saturation where I have modified the hue and saturation and with the levels I make it darker and then I decided to make some parts of this neon to look like they are not working, like they are broken. So I did that by creating an exposure adjustment layer and I decreased the exposure a lot, something like that, like uh, they are not working and I inverted the mask, painted on some parts of those uh, neons and uh, I made it look like it, it's not working, like uh, those parts are broken. And then to add some glow on this neon, the easiest way was to create a new layer and set it to color dodge. And then with the brush tool and the blue color I started to paint on some parts of uh, this uh, neon and I added a lot of lights using this uh, color dodge. And then underneath to make it more realistic I added uh, some cables that I manually drew so I created a new layer and I took the hard round brush, set the flow to 100% and using a really dark uh, blue color I started to paint some random uh, lines, some uh, random cables that uh, they were connected uh, to this uh, sign and I uh, made a lot of them coming from all the directions to as I said to make this uh, look more realistic. Then I double click on the layer to add a bevel and emboss and here I have played a bit uh, with the settings and I uh, decreased the opacity of the screen and now my cables look more realistic and also I have added a shadow that uh, had a really dark um, red color like the wall and I set the blending mode to multiply and of course a bigger size and a lesser opacity and my cables now look more realistic and of course because they are too sharp at the end I added a Gaussian blur so from blur Gaussian blur I added a one pixel Gaussian blur and now the cables uh, look like they belong there. Here on the windows and on the door of uh, this building I decided to use my own uh, artworks and to place them here on those uh, spots. And as I said I placed my own paintings, my own artworks on um, those areas and I set the blending mode uh, to screen and I added um, 
a Gaussian blur to blur it and I repeated the process to add more artworks. And because the original uh, building, the original uh, window was uh, cracked, was broken, I decided to repeat that and to uh, broke another window so it looks more realistic. So I found this picture of this broken glass. After that I added a mask and mask uh, the corners, the sides and I decided to set the blending mode to overlay. And now it already starts to look much better and I added a Gaussian blur to make it more blurry and I added a mask to mask the, some parts of the original painting. And now it looks much better. And because I wanted to show this building like a design store, I have added, I have written a design store here like the name of the store and uh, on the top I have, uh, you know, written some things like uh, what the store can do like uh, Blender, 3D renders, like Adobe Illustrator, like logo designs and of course Photoshop with photo manipulation. And as I said, I have added also this uh, design store here. The reason was that after I added all those things like uh, logos and uh, design store and stuff to make this building look like an old design store where before AI and stuff like that you could do a lot of uh, designs in there. Here on this uh, corner I wanted to add the artist. So everything started with uh, this uh, picture where I have selected uh, this uh, man and then I found another instance, another photo with the same uh, man and the dog and I selected him also from this picture too. Then I found uh, this photo of uh, this uh, guy and I selected the head and I placed the head and with the clone stamp tool I uh, tried to hide the, the dog from his legs and this took me a lot of time to reconstruct uh, this part but it uh, worked it because now it looks much better. Then I found this 3D jacket and I place it uh, underneath his uh, head, made it uh, darker by using uh, levels. And here on the sign, I have manually uh, painted, I have manually written design for food. And then using more clone stamp tool, I cloned and I drew over those parts of the jacket and I dragged him this result into my design. I added a shadow underneath, then I made uh, him darker using uh, level adjustment layer. And then in front of him, I placed this uh, open box, like he's requesting money because he has no uh, food and stuff. I added a shadow underneath and on each part of this box because it was too clean, to 3D. I use parts of this box and I cut each part and use it on the sides of my box. So I placed one part here, another one here and on those white areas uh, some more from that uh, box picture. And then I darken up everything again by using levels. I used a color balance to modify a bit the colors and added more shadows using levels. Here in front of the store I added a canvas. This picture I selected it, place it uh, here, added a Gaussian blur to it and then darken up using uh, levels and change the colors by using color balance. And I also added some shadows underneath the canvas. To create the robot I use this uh, 3D from Envato Elements and also uh, this, uh, this position and uh, I have removed the hands and uh, made uh, something like a base for my robot and then I have added again the same hands but I place them in another position. And then I found again on Envato this uh, 3D photo of a uh, vintage TV and I thought that this will work really well for the head of the robot. So from that uh, photo I selected only the TV and uh, now it looks like my robot has a head, that TV head. And I kept the antennas from it and I placed them on top of the TV, added some shadows for the antennas and also a shadow for the contact shadow of uh, the robot. By using hue and saturation, I desaturated the color of the TV. And then 
because I really loved uh, this color from the TV. I uh, changed the gray color into this copper color that the TV had by using the same hue and saturation and I made all those parts the same color that the TV has here. And of course, to make the robot darker, I added levels and with color balance, I changed the colors of it and with exposure, I added uh, lights on the right side and with the same technique that I used in the beginning of the tutorial with an overlay, I added some colors on those lights. I found a photo of some money flying. I placed uh, the money here like the robot is giving money to the poor artist and I added a motion blur by going to filter blur and here I chose motion blur and the angle is minus 40 degrees and the distance is 10 pixels. Then because the robot has a TV as a head, we should have some lights coming out from the TV. So I use my glow technique that I am using in all my tutorials. I create a group, set it to screen. Inside that group I create a layer that I fill with black, another layer that I will leave it empty and a gradient map where I already have some presets saved where I have used um, a preset with those colors and on the empty layer I have painted with the soft run brush and the flow really low like 1-2% I have painted uh, with the white color and I have made some rays by dragging with the mouse from left to right. For those who are using Mid Journey and uh, all those uh, similar AI programs, you know that in order for the program to generate you something, you have to write some words. So my intention here was like the robot is describing what he's seeing, like he's generating this uh, uh, artwork, like he's he wants high details, uh, he wants a poor artist, uh, an artist asking for money, intricate details, all those stuff that uh, people usually write in uh, having a really cool artwork at the end that the AI is generating uh, for them instead of creating that artwork uh, themselves. After that, I created a duplicate of uh, the entire text and I added uh, a motion blur to that text and I added some lines in front of the TV so it looks like a hologram more and then I found this guy who looks like what is going on here so I placed the pigeon on top of the AI robot made it darker added some lights added a shadow and then I uh, thought that this is uh, you know uh, too clean and the robot, the AI deserves something from the pigeon. So I manually drew this and it looks like that. So you can, uh, you know, uh, get your own conclusion from this, but I felt the need to do it. <laughs> and because I love cats, I couldn't end this artwork without a cat. So I placed the cat here, added a Gaussian blur, a shadow underneath the cat and also levels and some lights. When I finished, I thought that this right side is too empty. So I added a poster with a robot and I also written something on the wall. I'm really curious to find out your opinions about this video and also about the AI expansion. <laughs> if the AI is so dangerous and if AI will take the designer's jobs in the future. Anyway, let me know in the comments what do you think about it. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to watch those videos next if you want to learn even more about photo manipulation and Photoshop.